Um, so, hi, we will start in a few minutes. I'm just waiting for a few more people who might join in. It's just seven now. So, I'm here. Uh, I'm just waiting for five, ten minutes people to join in. I'm just waiting for a few people to join. <coughs> okay. Hello, everyone. So I think we can start now. So uh, today we will discuss week four content. And, uh, you know, I'll take a few practice questions. But before that, like, just wanted to know if you have any questions of your own. There's anything you want to ask first. And if not, then I'll start with the practice questions and few discussion 
points. No questions? Okay, so uh, let me just get started with the uh, practice questions for today. Just give me a minute. Okay, so uh, I'll just share the screen in a few minutes, but before I go to the practice questions, I just wanted to first check if everybody's like gone through the week for content. Yes, no, maybe partly. Okay. Uh, others? Yeah, I, it's not a test or something. I just want to know if you have or if you have not because it will just help me explain or discuss things better depending on whether you have gone through the three lectures for week four. Is everyone there? Sridhar, Shinde, uh, Biswadi. So this is a TA class. This is not a lecture class. So I, for me to teach the TA class, I need to know how much you have understood, if you have gone through the content or not. So, uh, hello. So, yeah, that's kind of why I wanted to first ask if everybody has gone through the content or not. Shreya Spatil. So, you need to unmute yourself and speak. You don't have to turn on your video if you don't want to, but you can always... Uh, uh, no, I'm not talking about class three and I cannot assume that everybody has gone through all the videos because a lot of times people have not. So this is week four content. Week three was last class, which I could not take. Uh, so... Once again, this is a TA class. This is not a lecture class. So I won't be sitting here and talking for two hours. This is meant to be an interactive class. And uh, this class is mainly for me to ask questions and for you guys to tell me whether you have understood the answer or not or what you think is the answer. Then I can explain further if you've not understood something. So if nobody is going to answer, I don't know what to teach. I can only teach you what you tell me you want me to teach you. Otherwise, the lectures are already there. So the TA class is just meant for answering your questions. <coughs> okay, so I'll share the... I was going to discuss something else, but if nobody responds... I will just project the question paper and you can tell me what you think is the answer. So that's the first question in today's practice questions. So why was the deep drawn sheet metal process more cost effective in the hero bicycle case study? You can type in your answer in the chat box.
So what was the overall idea in week three, oh, sorry, week four content? What do we study in the week four content? There's no response and I don't know what to teach. This is not like a typical mathematical or an engineering subject where I just bring five, you know, mathematical problems and I solve them on the board and that's it. You go happy, I go happy. This is a design course. So I can't just solve equations even if I project. I can prepare a problem set, but then you have to tell me whether you know how to answer it or not. Otherwise, there's very little for me to do. Okay, so nobody is answering the question. All right, so I'm stopping. Okay, so since nobody is answering the question, I just wanted to know what you guys wanted to do in the next two hours. All right, so I'll end the class here because nobody is answering anything. Nobody is asking anything either. And I don't want to sit here and waste my two hours talking without knowing what you want to know. So, uh, and I'll talk to the NPTEL team. If there is no participation in this course, then there's no need for a PA class for this particular course. Thank you. So I will continue where we left. We're just taking a few minutes break. Um, and uh, we've already discussed some of the practice questions which I had, but I wanted to also, th I thought that it would be a good idea to just go over the question paper from 
um, the previous year. So this course has been offered a few times and um, you know, some of the questions from the previous years were also relevant and I thought it will give you a good idea of the kind of questions you can expect in the exam, for example. So um, I wanted to take those up. Let me just open that file. So you just give me a moment. All right, we share my screen. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen now. So the first question in this uh, question paper is which of the following is not one of Chakku's seven C's? So if you remember the Chakku's seven C's was um, what he called sort of like an acronym kind of a thing, mnemonic maybe for uh, what Professor Chakraborty gives as his sort of design process or his design flow. And um, uh, so in this, the disadvantage of taking previous year's question is that the answers are already marked. So there's not like, a, um, there's not a whole lot to explain or discuss or something. But if you see in this question, um, the conception part is definitely a part of the design process. So uh, conception is definitely there. And there is collaboration is not a part of it because you see we're talking about the design flow or the design process in collaboration is not, I mean, it does not mean that you should not collaborate or that you know collaboration is uh, not needed. Uh, just try, give me a moment. Yeah, so collaboration is in, in involved, you know, it's a part of the whole design process, but it's not a separate step or it's not a separate component uh, in itself. So that is why collaboration is like the odd man out here. And context and comprehension, of course, is spoken on in great detail. So those are definitely going to be included in Chakku's seven C's. Then the next question is select the option which follows the correct sequence according to the pitfalls of uh, innovation. Now, uh, if you remember, he talks about all the different values of deaths for a product when we're trying to sort of, you know, take it to market and when you're trying to, <coughs> um, you know, get a success in innovation in a product. And <coughs> he talks about different stages of product innovation. And <coughs> the pitfalls associated with each um, step of product innovation. So again, like, as you can see, the answer is already marked on <coughs> Uh, the question sheet. So prototype, pilot production, and mass uh, production is the sequence 
in which the pitfalls of innovation are the most likely, which has the highest pitfalls of innovation. So, sorry, my cat is also involved in this entire course, so I can't rule her out. Um, so, prototyping is definitely the place where you know, a lot of people start to see some kind of a failure when you know what your design look like on your uh, drawing sheet or your art book is not um, that simple, that straightforward prototype. Then you go into the pilot production uh, phase and then you go into mass production. And this is kind of like the correct sequence in which you proceed. Like, for example, like design, prototype, mass production is missing out on the pilot production phase. Um, then the first one, research, prototype, mass production is again also missing out on um, several steps in between, including pilot production. Uh, research, design, pilot production is not correct in the, um, you know, in the sequence also because it is missing out on prototyping. So. All of these, of course, have their own pitfalls and the, the pitfalls keep increasing as you progress further in that sequence, but all the other options not in the correct sequence in the first place. Only the prototyping, uh, pilot production and mass production is in the correct sequence. The third <coughs> option is uh, which of the following is one of the pitfalls in the innovation process? Um, and the options are research to design, research to prototype, pilot production to mass production, and design to pilot production. So you see, he's talking about pitfall as in from what step to the next. He's not talking about pitfall in the usual metaphorical type of sense. He's talking about pitfall from one stage to the next stage. So <coughs> in this from research to design is one of those um, correct jumps in which you actually fall. So pitfall means like you're falling into a pit literally, right? So uh, research to design is one. Research to prototype is another one. Pilot production to mass production is, um, research to prototype, sorry, is not one. Pilot production to mass production is one of the pitfalls. And then design to pilot production has actually like missed many of the steps in between. So design to pilot production is uh, not one of them. So sorry, just give me a moment. This is not something I need to check. And I'll just be back. Yeah.
so um, as we were discussing, like, let's uh, continue to question number four. Uh, how should research work be conducted in order to achieve large scale impact for uh, innovation? So actually this part he has just directly explained in the lecture. I mean, of course, everything is there in the lecture, but the, you know, the correct uh, sequence is there in the lecture, which is uh, explanatory, inductive, and deductive. So um, this, the sequence is important because it sort of tells you the, mm, you know, the right uh, steps of that process. And uh, um, yeah, sorry, just give me a moment. And that's kind of how we arrive at this whole uh, exploratory, inductive, and deductive process. Okay, so going to the next question. <clears throat> Which of the following is our learnings from step through bike design from the real case studies for research? So first option is important info about users can be obtained from dealers. Second is market can be better understood through user surveys than talking to dealers. Third is market can be understood through dealers. Fourth is families can give better feedback in the bike design process than dealers. Okay, that's all. So, um, so the first and the third option are sort of saying uh, the same thing, you know. So, uh, what they're saying is that um, so actually, by the way, my power just got disconnected as in there's a power cut here so there's very less light right now that's why i've turned off my video because you can't actually see me anyway so and i'm just trying to run this on mobile internet so there's less bandwidth so i'm just turning off the video for some time so that uh, we can continue the class <clears throat> so yeah like i was saying in pop important information about users can be obtained from dealers is correct because he explains how actually the dealers uh, who who sort of sell the bike actually know a lot about their target user base and how they are actually <coughs> um you know they, they know the pain points of the users they know the requirements of the users and they understand the the sort of like the challenges which are faced by the users. So um, in that in that sense, um, yeah, so just give me a moment. There's, there's some issue with the internet. Yeah, just, just a minute.
Okay, let's carry on. There's some issue. I think my uh, Adobe Acrobat was sort of hanging, so I needed to reload the thing. Okay, <clears throat> so yeah, what I was saying was that you know the the market itself uh, can be understood very well through dealers, and secondly, the users can be understood well through the dealers. So the thing is, you know. The user can tell you uh, a little bit about his or her individual priorities and you know requirements, pain points, but to get in knowledge and information about a lot of users across different age groups, different backgrounds, and everything, the best way to get that on a quick basis is to go to the dealers who sell to all of these people. So. Uh, this is the first thing. The second thing is about the market itself, you know, because um, the market is a, sort of like a conglomeration of individual demands and individual, um, you know, requirements and what kind of stuff do people buy a lot, what kind of stuff may be good but does not sell or, you know, what is the price range uh, which is ideal to sell a certain type of a bike. So, you know, those those kind of things can be learned best through the dealers because they don't just have a knowledge about the users, but they also have knowledge about the whole segment, the whole market for uh, bicycles. And that is very, very valuable to a designer who wants to get all of this knowledge kind of fast, you know, because instead of going from door to door, like from one person to another person, trying to get this information, you could just directly go to the dealers. So, <coughs> the second and the third option are <coughs> not uh, correct in this sense, because you see, the, that's the point we're trying to make, that, you know, user surveys can firstly tell you only so much. A lot depends on your sample size, and then if you want to get, like, information about hundreds of users, you need to go and do surveys of hundreds of users. And, and dealers, on the other hand, have already dealt with hundreds of users or maybe even more than hundreds of users. So they can give you this knowledge very quickly um, and very comprehensive idea of what people want. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Uh, question number six, you are likely to fall in which of the following pitfalls if you haven't properly developed the following criteria in your innovation vendor development, material selection, user testing, market research. In the research and the design phase are not the biggest pitfall which people people fall into. But you know, these are all the different different stages in that entire process. Uh, but the question is asking you that you are likely to fall in which of the pitfalls if you haven't properly developed the following criteria. So you see, they're not asking about just any pitfall. They're asking about if you have not worked on, if you have not detailed out, if you have not thought through vendor development, material selection, user testing, market research, then in that scenario, which which pitfall are you sort of likely to fall into? And that pitfall is prototype to pilot because you see in prototyping, you can kind of produce everything very quickly because, you know, I mean, quickly doesn't mean one hour, but Maybe in a day you can create a prototype because you can just 3D print it or you can just use like a low fidelity prototype with materials like styrofoam or, um, you know, cardboard or something and things like that, which are sort of very easy to work with and which give, you know, which work very well with 
all types of products right they have their very versatile materials but they're not exactly true to the final product so the difference between a prototype and a pilot is that <laughs> you need to spend a lot of time thinking about your materials thinking about the whole purpose of pilot is that you actually take it out for user testing whereas sometimes in a prototype you can explain the product you can you know demonstrate for the purpose of you know conceptual clarity for the purpose of explanation but you can't really test it especially if you know it's like a medical device or if it's like a bicycle which you want to ride then you can't actually get your users to test it you can't sort of ride a bicycle made of styrofoam uh, or cardboard for example right you can only show people what it's going to look like or how it is going to function so if you've not considered user testing properly then <clears throat> from prototype to pilot stage you're definitely going to fail and then the fourth option is pilot to mass production because you see the vendor development part and uh, the market part the market research part it comes from pilot to mass production so when you are in the pilot stage you're basically testing your product and giving it for um, you know like a beta test or something where users are um, trying out your product and giving you early feedback but when you go from pilot to mass production you need to think about the vendors you know who are your vendors going to be and how are they going to work with you and how are you going to produce it because uh, even a pilot you can perhaps um, you know create the pilot in your workshop because you maybe you have the materials and you have all the nuts and bolts so to say so <clears throat> maybe you can do that in your own workshop but the moment you move to mass production you need to think of scale so for pilot maybe 10 20 um items you can do in your own workshop you can somehow get the funds and produce 10 20 but you know you're still not doing it on an industrial scale you're still not doing it <clears throat> in a way that it will actually be done once you take the product to the market and that part requires um a lot of you know intense dedication to the whole process what we call as vendor development because vendor development is what is required for mass production and the market research is what is required for your product to be successful in the market not just in the you know that you know you've got all the screws and nuts and bolts in place so that's fine but that that's not enough for a product to be successful you, you need it to uh, work in the market for the market to accept it so um so the, that's why i like i said you know you need to read the question very well because in the question they've said that if you haven't properly developed the following criteria in your evaluation which uh, means that uh, you know they're specifically talking about certain phases of the design process and uh, they're asking you which phase of the design process are these criteria most important and that's that's the um, that's the part where you likely fail and these steps what they mention are the most relevant to prototype to piloting <laughs> to piloting to mass production okay all right next question question number 7 here So while designing a bicycle for hero cycles what was arguably the biggest breakthrough so um <clears throat> first is reduction of cost by 25% using sheet metal is a second option uh, using the deep drawing manufacturing method to make car parts is the next option and lastly to reduce the wheel size wheel size sorry to accommodate the longer fork now uh, if you remember the reduction of cost actually originally the reduction of cost was much higher but then because of the deep drawing method the cost actually came down a lot but then there were some other parts there were some other components which increased the cost also so that is why the net reduction was only 25% but it was still a major reduction in um, in the cost but that was not the biggest breakthrough per se 
the main thing was that they moved from using aluminium and other rods to using sheet metal because you see when and that's the reason why they even reduced the cost in the first place because um if you remember correctly so professor chakraborty explains where you know the rods uh, or the pipes which they use in making cycles they are actually they're not like manufactured as rods and pipes they are basically sheet metal which is finally then molded into uh, into pipes and uh, so when you are using sheet metal itself you are actually avoiding a whole lot of wastage because you are directly using the uh, the sheet metal instead of spending more labor more resources in actually um, building it into a pipe right so the use of sheet metal was some inspiration they took from the automobile industry and that's already a very well established um technology a very well established method and <coughs> they used the deep drawing method which is also used in um making car parts and that is also a manufacturing method which is a very well established method very established technology but used in a different industry so what they did was they took some technology which had already matured although in a different industry and they found a way to use it in the manufacture of bicycles and in a bicycle design they found ways to make the frame lighter to make the frame you know to reduce vibration to reduce the sort of like the moving parts kind of to make the manufacturing process a bit faster because when you use deep drawing and you use the sheet metal the process becomes faster and uh, <coughs> of uh, it it reduces a lot of wastage of material of wastage of labor so the cost also comes down so the biggest breakthrough the underlying you know the underlying sort of you can say the philosophy or something is the use of sheet metal and the use of deep drawing manufacturing method because we use deep drawing with sheet metal so option number 2 and 3 are the correct answers okay let's uh, go to question number 8 why was the handle bar connected to the fork of the new design of hero cycles made long first option is to prevent warping of sheet metal second is to prevent extra torque for turning third is to provide ergonomic comfort and fourth is to make the cycle look stylish so if you understand like you know the way these um, it's it's basically a slightly minor technical detail but it kind of changes the design you know because now we are not working with rods and metals you're working with sheet metal so what happens with sheet metal is automatically you have some other um you know uh, other constraints or other things the considerations uh, which you need to sort of keep in mind and the warping of the sheet metal is one of those constraints so uh, once you use sheet metal what you do need to do is that you need to ensure that there is no warping of the sheet metal while the user is using the cycle or you know maybe not like while using the cycle per se but what i mean to say is like you know over a period of time as the user keeps uh, using the cycle you want to make sure that the metal is not warping now the thing is if you make the body of the cycle with the, with the sheet metal then the um you know and if that sheet metal starts to warp you can understand that that will automatically make <clears throat> the cycle less stable and hence less safe so if the, if the cycle is going to if the base if the basic uh, body of the cycle is going to start sort of warping then it is going to also change the balance of the cycle it can uh, you know make it more uh, like you understand what i mean by changing the balance of the cycle right and it can also make the cycle more unstable so if the balance is not exactly centered if it's a little bit off also it's kind of going to make it difficult for the rider to keep uh, to keep using the cycle so 
uh, automatically this makes the whole thing uh, sort of like a game changer and it's not a design constraint which can be ignored so to sort of but at the same time as we were just discussing the whole um, sheet metal thing was the big um, technological big breakthrough and otherwise overall innovative breakthrough uh, in the cycle design and they wanted to find a way to keep that they wanted to find a way in which they can sort of counter that warping of the metal of the sheet metal um, and you know because they wanted to sort of reap the benefits of the sheet metal uh, and not have to go back to the original methodologies so for that purpose they made the handle bar uh, a bit longer to distribute the weight and to distribute the balance in a in a better way and uh, that is the basic reason for uh, you know using a handle bar which is longer <clears throat> the weight the way the weight uh, of the cycle falls changes when you change the size of the handle bar and the length of the handle bar so that was the main consideration okay let's go to question number 9 which of the following mean the same as crafting in chakku 7c's and that is let's go to the options cause problem identification conception prototyping so um like if you can if you see the answers you can obviously understand that it is prototyping which is crafting and that's what he means by the word crafting and uh, cause and problem identification conception are not close to the meaning of the word crafting in the first place so <clears throat> there's a fairly straightforward uh, question and the correct answer is prototyping in let's go to question 10 in a sequential process like the seven c's which of the following is not in a chronological order from a to b so the options are check conception comprehension and crafting so um if you remember comprehension actually comes before conception right you need to comprehend the whole design brief before you can start conceptualizing and before you can sort of you know, start uh, coming up with the design so comprehension is uh, in the wrong logical sequence and chronologically it is out of place so to check was what i think he was referring to as the context and that is in the correct place but that comes after that comes the comprehension and then you come to conception which is basically the whole designing process and then crafting is prototyping after that so um in the chronological uh, chronological sort of order comprehension is um is out of this so this um, this whole assignment practice assignment from the previous years is already uh, i think it's i already uploaded it i'm not sure i'll check if i have already uploaded it uh, but uh, i hope this was sort of helpful because this is one of the previous years assignments and it's kind of like uh, going to be useful for you guys in case it has not been uploaded i will upload it by tomorrow and um uh, uh, you know if you have any other questions so in this the advantage is i don't have to give you a solution separately the solution is already there in the, the question it's already marked on the in the question so um i would suggest that when you preparing for your exam you kind of you know go over the questions and try to see them without the answer and test your test your knowledge so uh, this is it i guess i think uh, this covers this week's uh, portion and uh, if you have any other questions please please feel free to ask thank you